Okay, we're up to the dinam of. Uh, by the way, tonight, as everybody knows, the Yutis Kislev. So we don't see Tachnun, Yutes, and Chov Kislev. Even though it's interesting, because in Ayayim Yayim, it doesn't say about Chov Kislev, no Tachnun. Uh, just as Yutis Kislev, no Tachnun. But you basically give Gimel Tamas, it says both days, no Tachnun. What's interesting, Yud Kislev and Ayayim Yayim, it also doesn't say you don't see Tachnun. And there are times. That the Rebbe Davin for the Yomid, when the Rebbe was in Avelis, and Chov Kislev, interesting, the Rebbe said Tachnun at the Yomid and Chov Kislev. Nevertheless, the Minig by Chesidim is that you don't see Tachnun, not Yutas, and not Chov, and not Yud, and so on and so forth. So the bottom line is there's no Tachnun tomorrow and uh, the next day. Now, back to the mitzvah of Davin, the Zman for Shachris, okay? So the proper time, the best time to daven shachris is at sunrise. Okay? Because it says, Yero'ucho im shamesh. They will see you, Hashem, meaning davening in with the sun. But, with the Yavid, people have to go to work or whatever it is. Nowadays it became a chathchile because people have to go to work early or whatever it is. You could daven from Amur HaShacha, when dawn. It was generally speaking, is 72 minutes before sunrise. So now there's even before the time of Thousand Tefillin, really. Thousand Tefillin is Mishayakir, when a person could see a semi-close friend uh, four hours away, six feet away. But our davening is even before that. But Lepreil, you know, uh, now, the last time to daven, really, is not like Krishna, which is a quarter of the day, which is three hours into the day. Zman Tefillin, the time where you have to daven shachas before is what, four hours into the day, a third of the day. And again, how do you count? Like we learned, halachic hours, starting from sunrise, four halachic hours is when Zman Tvila ends. In the Hasidic world, there's already a lot of chuvas written about that. In the Hasidic world, they're more, more makel, more lenient with the union of davening after Zman Tvila. But the truth is, you know, if you're up learning chassidus or doing yeshiva, you know, or whatever it is, is one thing. It's time to wake up and daven dafka after zman tefillah against halacha. And there's a letter from the Rebbe that even those who daven after zman tefillah definitely should not daven after chatzais, which is midday, which these days is approximately 11.34, something like that. So b'chlal, zman tefillah is a din in shukhun This that chassidim or mekel were lenient, so it's brought down in the Jewish because they used to learn before davening and then they pre taught, pre meditated before davening, they learned before davening, they did things. Not stam, you do everything else and then you wake up to go daven 12 o'clock. I mean, that's mamish against halacha. <laughs> Technically, halachically, if it's after chatzais, you have to daven two minches because you miss shachris. But that's only if an accident happened. If it's intentional, you can't make up an extra Shemon Esrei. We're going to learn all those dinam about Tashlumim. You can't make up Shemon Esrei if it was negligent, just if it was an accident. <laughs> after dawn, halachically, if somebody needs to, they could, uh, they could, uh, what should we call it? They could after Amod HaShachar, which we said is 72 minutes before, generally speaking. After dawn, if you forgot to say Kriyat Shema, is that too late to say after dawn? No, Krishna, you shouldn't say until later. The no. best time to say Shema, is, you could say after dawn is... No, the, the night before you... Oh, Krishna, you told me. You forgot to say it. Can you say it after dawn, like 5.14? You mean you didn't go to sleep yet? You woke up and you realized you didn't say it. Can you say it after 5.14? Or no. you promised to go to sleep again? No. So what is the latest on Shachri? Uh, let's go back on that. What time it is? Like 10 o'clock in the morning, you can't go past 10 o'clock. You want to know what time? Uh, the latest. Okay, but by, by Chassidim, Bechlal, like I mentioned, Shabbos, Bechlal, um, one minute, let me get this, my name. Um, okay, Lash Krishna today is 9.08, Last fila, according to the the way we hold, nine fifty nine. So this, uh, they go and at, at noontime they do. Noontime minion is completely against talach. Go watch. Why don't you walk? Look at the people davening. Then it's not people that are busy or learning a davening. Yeah, 
It's a bunch of later gators, right? On La Brea. That's what it is. What can I tell you? Huh? It's 770 also. <laughs> 770 also. Okay, now he says like this. Before a person is about to touch from an essay, they need to have... They need... What? Before, Not they wake up 12.30 and learn chassidus. They get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and they go to mikvah and they learn chassidus for three hours. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's when the hetter is that you could daven shachrus late. Like this, there's no hetter in the world to daven stam after his man tefillah, after his man uh, definitely not after chatzais. So his nets is considered like the... the... Nets is the best time for tefillin and shma and, and davening. In fact, in Halacha it says what's called Vasikin. A lot of people daven Vasikin. Yeah. What does Vasikin mean? They work out that they start davening, that they come to Krishna right before sunrise, and they daven Shachris at sunrise. Yeah. That's what in Halacha, not by Chesidim. In Halacha it says that's the best way of doing it. Okay, anyway, a person has to, before starting Shman they have to. Set their mind to daven. You know, you're davening in front of the king and you, you have to have kavon and know what you were davening. Okay? So then, after you say go al Yisrael, you take three steps back, right? You need to take three steps up. Take three steps back and then you walk up with your right foot first and then you take the three steps and put your feet together. So during the Shemun the feet are supposed to be together because at that time we want to be like the angels. And the Pasik says, obviously it's not a physical thing, but it says Raglehem Regal Yeshara, that the feet of the angels is like one foot. So therefore, when we daven Shmanasra, we say Kaddish, or things like that, so then we actually uh, put our feet together. Um, okay, now before davening, we say the pasuk Hashem svasei tiftach ufi yagid till asachot Hashem should open our lips ufi yagid my mouth should say uh, tell your praises. Okay, now a person who when they're starting to daven, that um, by the way even the tshuva by the way it's interesting that is tzvi's tshuva I see now he brings it down taka. Now remember the eris tzvi eris tzvi's tshuva was a talmud of daven in Ezer, and he writes, what was the Chassidim should have? And, and he writes that this, the Chassidim Davin late, he writes, is when they start before Zman Tfila and they continue after Zman Tfila. But not Lechatchila starting. Okay. <clears throat> now, a person, when they're about to Davin, they have to realize they're Davening to the Shekhinah. Hashem's presence is Mama Shapis at them. They should remove everything from their mind. And as if they're davening in front of the king. Now he says, he says that if you would be davening in front of a physical king, you're having a meeting with the king, and you're asking him for your needs, right? Just for your, the, the king should give you what you need. So there's no question a person would have proper kavana when he's talking to the king that he's concentrating not in everything else in the around the world, but he's actually talking talking to the king himself. So uh, how much more so when you're davening before Hashem that you have to clean yourself from all thoughts and speech because by Hashem, Hashem knows the thoughts anyway. So I told you, <laughs> there's a story, a, a chassid, it was the time of the Maggit, there was a chassid davening Shemunasri, and when he finished, his friend went over to him and said, Shalom Aleichem. He said, what do you mean Shalom Aleichem? I'm here the whole time, what do you mean Shalom Aleichem? He said, no, I noticed when you were davening Shmon Esrei, you were in the marketplace in this city, you are in the marketplace in that city, you are all over the world in business, <clears throat> you know, thinking about business. So now you finally finished Shmon Esrei, you came back to earth. So I'm giving you Shalom Aleichem, you came back to the city. So a person has to daven properly. Okay, you need to daven, uh, know what the words mean. Because brought down by the Rabbeim, the, the rabbi, when their kids were little, they had the teacher teach them the meaning of the words of davening. Now it's much easier because you have uh, English sedurim and this uh, that you have a lot of different languages. But a person should actually know what he's davening, especially the first bracha shmanesi. Then you must have kavanah what the words are. If not, you're not yetsa. 
So it says, in fact, in Allah it says, what happens if in the middle of davening you get some foreign thoughts? So stop davening, get rid of the thoughts, and then continue davening again. Okay, we put the uh, feet next to each other, like we said. Um, okay, and you bend a little bit your eye, your head down. If you daven from a sit now, during davening, you're not allowed to hold anything in your hand except a siddur. You're not allowed to have anything in your hand except the city because that takes away from the proper kavana, from the proper intent. But it does say in Aloha like this, that what happens if a kid's screaming and he's disturbing you and he's disturbing everybody else in show? So then the din is, you can pick up the kid and hold him in your hand because it's less of a distraction of a quiet kid than a kid screaming and yelling. So even though really you're not allowed to hold anything in your hand except a siddur or machs or whatever it is, but um, you're not allowed to. Mm-hmm. Also, huh? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I was talking about. What are you talking about? <coughs> in middle shmanase halacha, if a kid's crying and disturbing everybody, you go in middle shmanase, you pick him up and calm him down. In fact, it says in poskim, what happens? Somebody's davening. And in the middle, he needs to know a halach about the Shemun He needs to know something, like, uh, no. do I do this, do I do that, what's the din? So many parts come out, you can walk out middle of Esri, get the safe you need, look up the halacha, and then go back to Daven. From the beginning? Or? No, where you left off. It doesn't consider us. Huh? It doesn't consider us. It's not as, yeah, it's not a head, because it's all for the sake of Davening. Now, there's another very important thing over here. And that is, every Nusach, every davening, whether Ashkenaz, Sfad, uh, other Sfad, Chabad, all them, they are all holy. They're all holy. Each one of them is based in the holy levels of Kedusha. Each one has an exact amount of words. And there are reasons for the exact amount of words. Uh, when we continue Shabbos afternoon, learning about Kaddish, we'll learn that even Kaddish has an exact amount of words. Even Kaddish has an exact amount of words. And therefore, by Ne'ilah and Yom Kippur, when we say, Le'ela u Le'ela, we add a word to the Kaddish. The chazan, we all say, Le'ela u Le'ela. So then the din is that we join two words together that are normally separate. We say, Le'ela min kol birchasa, min kol, which is two words, but because we're adding another word, Le'ela, Le'ela, we make it, instead of min kol, we make it mikol birchasa. Because everything in Davani has an exact amount of words, Shmanesri has an exact amount of words, and, and, and Kaddish, every part of Davani, there's an exact amount of words. One second, so if somebody's going to Davani mixed nusach, you know, half this, half that, half this. They're they're making a mess of davening. They're nowhere because each each text is, is perfect. What? Going back, you can hold the dock in your hand during. No. You can't. No. The only thing you're allowed to hold it says you're not allowed to hold anything in your hand during shmanesri except a siddur. Or like I said, if a kid's disturbing and you're going to pick him up, will be less disturbance than you could. No, you're not allowed to hold anything in your hand. If somebody's asking you, you're dabbing, and somebody's like uh, trying to ask you if you should turn the page or the. If it's for their sake of davening, halachically, you can motion to them what the right thing to do. But again, that's only but the other. There's no choice. The guy doesn't know what to do, and then you're helping them out. But again, that's because it's for the sake of the davening of the Shemanesri. Uh, I'll give you another example. What happens, you, you're in the middle of Kriya and the guy uh, lanes and makes a mistake. Or you know Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, we blow it during the quiet Shemun So you're in the middle of Shemun and the blower makes a mistake. So Pascal right, you're not allowed to correct him. You are not allowed to correct him in the middle of Shemun if you're, if you're not there where the stop is. Why? Because middle of Shemun you don't do anything. What if you are? Huh? Then if you can motion... Then if you're at the place where they blow anyway, then you can motion, but you can't talk. Huh? How do you tell them? Ah, 
the Jewish way. Uh, you have I remember many you years ago, many years ago, one yeah. sec, we were by Yishtabach during the week. It was a long, I think, I told me like 30 years ago. We didn't have a minion. We had nine. And we are by Yishtabach. But I didn't want to talk. Technically, I would be allowed to call somebody because for the need of davening, I would be able to say, we need you for a minion. But whatever, Mishigas I had, I didn't want to say it. So I called up this guy, remember who it was, I don't want to say your name. I call him up and say, ah. Oh. He says, who is this? I said, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Who is this? I say, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. So finally he had to say, you need a minion? I said, ah, oh, ah. Oh. So he came, he came, we had a minion. <laughs> it was interesting.